available to our city nations of Loyola Vigil for racial justice and a night of prayer, meditation, listening, solidarity, lamentation, and hope with and for the Belen Jesuit community, our nation, and our world. We invite you to enter into this space with an open heart and soul and mind in the presence of God. The theme for our vigil is Words Are Not Enough by the words of Saint Ignatius himself in the spiritual exercises, love ought to manifest itself more in deeds than in words. We are not gathered to speak empty platitudes or hide behind the guise of nice prayerful words. We are gathered to be inspired by the Holy Spirit in order to work for racial justice at various levels of our school, community, and beyond. May the Holy Spirit and St. Ignatius of Loyola help us transform every spoken word into real action. Good evening. On behalf of Belen Jesuit, I invite you to witness the lighting of this candle as we ignite the interior flame of the Holy Spirit. This candle will burn silently throughout our vigil, but it will roar with the cries of our brothers and sisters that long for that very fire of total and complete acceptance, justice, compassion, and hope. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Saint Ignatius, you invite us all to begin prayer with what is called a composition of place. It is a moment where we set the scene in our imaginations for what we are about to contemplate. You see, contemplation has often been defined as taking a long, loving look at the real. And tonight, we ask for that grace to enter this prayer by contemplating the very scenes, images, and realities that affect so many people, whether it be in our own lives, in our families, in our friends. And even if we've seen some of these images or heard these stories before, we ask for the grace to look upon them with new eyes, with the eyes of Christ. Let us ask for the grace to adopt the mind, the heart, and the soul of Christ as we contemplate the reality of racism and the ongoing struggle for racial justice in our city, in our country, and in our world today. Come, Holy Spirit. Gli Stati Uniti seguo con grande preoccupazione i dolorosi disordini sociali che stanno accadendo nella vostra nazione in questi giorni a seguito della tragica morte del signor George Floyd. Cari amici, non possiamo tollerare né chiudere gli occhi su qualsiasi tipo di razzismo o di esclusione e pretende di difendere la sacralità di ogni vita umana. Nello stesso tempo dobbiamo riconoscere che la violenza delle ultime notti è autodistruttiva e autolesionista. Nulla si guadagna con la violenza e tanto si perde. la chiesa di San Paul e Minneapolis e di tutti gli Stati Uniti nel pregare per il riposo dell'anima di George Floyd e di tutti gli altri che hanno perso la vita a causa del peccato del razzismo. Preghiamo per il conforto delle famiglie e degli amici affranti e preghiamo per la riconciliazione nazionale 
el Apache a cui anhelamos. Nuestra Señora de Guadalupe, Madre de la América, interceda por todos coloro que trabajan por la paz y la justicia en la vuestra tierra y en el mundo. Dios bendiga a todos vos y a vuestra familia. All loving Father, we pray for self-awareness, contrition, and healing in order to address the persistent sin of racism, which rejects the full humanity of your children and the talents and potential you have given. We ask all this through Christ, our brother and Lord. Amen. Good evening. We're here tonight to offer testimonies about our experiences in Berlin facing racism and ignorance. Now, Berlin in our eyes is a family. We've been here since sixth grade and the faculty and students are great. However, like many places, including other schools, society, the workplace, and frankly, the world, we still face racism and ignorance. These racist experiences do not define Berlin nor the Berlin Brotherhood. However, it has come to the point where they must be addressed. One, ex one experience involves my brother and I studying in the seventh grade in the library. We sat across from a group of freshman boys and overheard their discussion. They were using racial slurs, racial stereotypes, and talking about slavery. I was honestly shocked and numb and didn't know what to do. It came to the point where my brother and I were simply helpless. We looked for teachers, there were none. We looked for other students, there were none. And it came to the point where we were thinking, if nobody says anything to these boys, they'll continue what they're doing. And that's a common thing where no one's called out on their actions, so they are under the impression that it's okay. So we knew we had to step in. So I mustered up the courage to talk to these boys, to confront them, and I attempted to educate them and to see where they were coming from. And when I confronted the boy, he was honestly shocked. And this is a perfect example of what goes on in the student body that the administration doesn't really see. Every day, students use racial slurs and people to stay quiet, and they're so used to them. A lot of the racism we see in Berlin or in society is out of ignorance. We're in a, bu in a bubble in Berlin, which is okay, but the fact is no one's getting called out on what they're saying, so they're under their, the idea that it's okay. And that has to stop. People need to step up, and that's where the individual comes into play. If you yourself can talk to your friend or talk to a teacher or someone and spread more awareness, you yourself can have the opportunity to change uh, your society for the better. It can start as small as a little conversation with one of your friends. Change doesn't matter how big it is. Small change has a huge impact in the future. It all starts somewhere and we want to share our journey and influence others to do the same. After that moment, the diversity advisory panel came into play and the administration got more involved. And throughout the years, Berlin has truly transformed into this environment that truly takes on these matters head on. This is just the aftermath of one moment of someone stepping up. And that just truly goes to show that words are not enough. Thank, Thank you. you. As we read now the story of the Good Samaritan, we're invited to consider how we have treated our neighbors in need. In fact, the term neighbor in Spanish is prójimo, translated in English as proximate. Our neighbor thus is any person immediately in front of us or next to us. Let's ask for the grace to encounter our neighbor with service and compassion. A reading from the Gospel according to Luke. There is a scholar of the law who stood up to test him and said, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? He said in reply, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. He replied to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. But because he wished to justify himself, he said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man fell victim to robbers as he went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. 
They stripped and beat him, and went off leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down that road, but when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. Likewise, a Levite came to the place, and when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. But a Samaritan traveler, who came upon him, was moved with compassion at the sight. He approached the victim, poured oil and wine over his wounds, and bandaged them. Then he lifted him up on his own animal, took him to the inn, and cared for him. The next day he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper with the instruction, Take care of him. If you spend more than I have given you, I shall repay you my way back. Which of these three, in your opinion, was the neighbor to the victim of the robber? He answered, The one who treated him with mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. bishops teach racism is a sin, a sin that divides the human family, blots out the image of God among specific members of that family, and violates the fundamental human dignity of those called to be children of the same father. Too many times, miseducation and a narrow perspective has blocked the path to racial healing. Too many times, apathy has hindered the road to racial reconciliation. We are invited to examine ourselves and how we participate in the systems and structures that perpetuate injustice. At this moment, I invite us to pause interiorly and examine our own lives in light of the sin of racism. We ask ourselves, have I fully loved God and fully loved my neighbor as myself? Have I caused pain to others by my actions or my words that offended my brother or my sister? Have I done enough to inform myself about the sin of racism, its roots, and its historical and contemporary manifestations? Have I ever witnessed an occasion when someone fell victim to personal, institutional, systemic, or social racism, and I did or said nothing. Is there a root of racism within me that blurs my vision of who my neighbor is? Let us pray. All loving Father, we ask for forgiveness and pray for the grace to recognize the systems that do not support the dignity of every person, that do not promote respect for those that are seen as the other, who bear the legacy of centuries of discrimination fear, and violence. We ask all this through Christ, our brother and Lord. Amen. I humbly share my experiences with the contamination of systemic racism and hope my transparency provides perspective. My hometown was influenced based on numerous times my parents were informed by realtors. The communities they were interested in living were not appropriate for them. My elementary school experience is tainted by a teacher who blatantly acknowledged to my family that a black student shouldn't belong in her classroom. In middle school, the Latin class had a program where students played Roman citizens and others as slaves. My parents vehemently objected to being required to participate. And after continued discussions, the administration stood behind the teacher. 
My high school football team arrived at opposing schools to black dolls with nooses around their necks, and two of my favorite teachers attempted to discourage me from pursuing a degree in engineering due to the fact that I would have to compete with more Asian students. In college, my late wife had her freshman roommate refuse to share a room with her due to race, and for me, I was one of only 15 black students pursuing engineering degrees in my class, only four of us graduating. I was the only black student within the civil engineering department during my four years, where my own personal academic advisor told me directly I was not cut out for this. The Catholic church where I was married was referred to by the local community as the white church due to historic segregation in that town. Clients have told me I've been the only black person in their career to lead negotiations. For over 20 of the 25 years I've been an engineering professional, I've been able to count all of the black engineers employed within the organizations I've been employed. Most of these organizations with greater than 1,000 employees. I've had a gun pulled on my own brother during a routine traffic stop here in Miami, and I've heard my children as early as the age of six having encountered racist behavior at their schools that they can recount with clarity. I've had my oldest son secure a Florida ID at the age of 12, requiring him to have it everywhere he goes out of fear of the actions of others. And we continue to speak regarding how he needs to interact with police officers with regular reminders that I intend to continue through his own adulthood. As a family, we have discussions, especially with my three children, about how to handle discrimination by classmates while navigating the academic rigors of some of Miami's best schools. This narrative is not unique and it's not extreme, but it's part of my life and has shaped me into the person I am today. I may have developed a coping mechanism and learned to compartmentalize, but why should I have to? Why should my children or other people of color have to? All watching here today have a role to play in having our community evolve. Do not ignore this conversation, especially when it gets uncomfortable. Start by understanding, taking time to educate yourself, Recognizing your own personal microaggressions may exist and that those can be equally as painful as overt racism. This is why words are not enough. As we move beyond words, music and the arts can help us to put language to the wounds of our reality and invite us to creative change. The following song is called Miseducation by Lauren Hill. I invite you all to pray with the lyrics so that we too are inspired to live what our hearts sing. Seems so far away and life squeezes so tight that I can't breathe and every time I've tried to be what someone else thought of me so caught up I was unable to achieve but deep in my heart many cry for help searching outside of themselves now I know that his strength is within me and deep in my heart the answer it wasn't me and I made
On May 25th of this year, I, along with the rest of the world, witnessed one man lose his life on TV. As he gasped for air, all I could do was pray. I felt so helpless for him, his family, my children, and this world. You see, I firmly believe that everything begins and ends with God. And that led me into a place of introspection and examination of my own life. See, for many years I have worked in silence to be better, to give more and love more, to be kinder, and to raise my children to understand that we treat all people this way, not just some people. That was the problem though. I did it in silence. I thought about how I could start that change and realized that it would take courage. So I took to social media and posted a picture of my son and I and a simple call for social and racial justice underneath. I had finally had the courage to use my voice. That post prompted one of the people I love most in this world to scrutinize and mock the very words and beliefs that took so much courage for me to share. So I simply asked him, is your God different than mine? This sparked a conversation that I would have never expected. And at the end of this very powerful dialogue, the word that stayed was courage. You see, I am the mom of two beautiful biracial children, and I'm tired of watching them grow up in a world where it's only okay for some to sit at the table and not all. This is my call to action from my family and friends to my community, our country and this world to have the courage to sustain. When you are challenged and you don't see the progress, when those closest to you put up walls and discourage or mock this fight, that we sustain our courage and stand our ground and remind ourselves that there is a place for us all and that we will work for social and racial justice because we want this change much more than we fear it. You see, the same breath that was taken from one man is the very breath that unites us all. My hope is that our sustained courage will create the type of change that weaves itself into the fabric of our existence for our actions as a collective can change the world. And this is why words are not enough. As we enter into the final moments of prayer during this vigil, Psalm 85 is a lament of the people of Israel reminding God of past favors and forgiveness, and begs for forgiveness and grace now from our Father in heaven. The following psalm will be read by the Jesuit Superior of Miami, interspersed with petitions of students that cry for an end to racism on all levels. Love and truth will meet, justice and peace will kiss. Our loving Father, we pray for structures of grace so children of color in Miami and all children have quality education that will allow them to develop their gifts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Truth will spring from the earth. Justice will look down from heaven. All merciful Father, we pray for structures of grace so people of color in our country and all peoples have homes where families can live in dignity and security. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Yes, the Lord will grant his bounty. Our land will yield this produce. All compassionate Father, we pray for structures of grace for our servicemen and women, be it military, police, and all first responders, for their safety and well-being, that they may be inspired by compassion and justice in the protection and service of all peoples. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Justice will march before him. All just Father, we pray for structures of grace so children of color all around the world and all children can have access to quality health care and services during this pandemic and beyond. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And make a way for his footsteps. 
all-embracing Father, we pray for structures of grace, that our church and its leadership may live its prophetic call and nurture spaces of discernment, healing, and hope for people of color and all peoples. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lastly, we now take a moment of silence to offer in our hearts our own petitions and intentions as beloved sons and daughters of our one Father. May the Holy Spirit give us the strength to live all of the intentions prayed in silence and out loud. Through Christ, our brother and Lord, amen. Precisely because St. Ignatius stated in his spiritual exercises, love ought to show itself more in deed then in word, we conclude our vigil with the following. It is a series of commitments to action made by the different areas of our Belen Jesuit community to ensure that we move forward collaboratively in building the kingdom of God, fostering an anti-racist environment and a hope-filled community that seeks racial justice together. Because words are not enough. I and the rest of the student council are committed to lead by example, to create a culture of acceptance, which includes respecting and learning from the experience of our diverse racial communities at Belen. Because words are not enough. I and the rest of the diversity advisory panel are committed to share our lived experiences as people of color to promote awareness and provide a safe, non-judgmental space for all students. Because words are not enough. I have one of over 7,500 Belen alumni around the world. Challenge our alumni to address any form of racism in our businesses, families, societies of art that opens us to encounter the other as brother. Because words are not enough. I and the rest of Belen Athletics are committed to living as true men for and with others by not tolerating any form of bigotry on and off the fields. Because words are not enough. I and the rest of Estovir are committed to continued formation in the work of racial justice in light of our faith, to do the deep work of examining ourselves and stand with our brothers and sisters of color in dialogue and service. Because words are not enough. I, as a Belen mom and grandmother, challenge our generations to break the silence that allows for racial injustice to persist and to install in our children a passion to become agents of healing and hope for our brothers and sisters of color. Because words are not enough. I and the rest of the Belen Jesuit administration, faculty and staff are committed to being proactive in listening to the voices of our students and families of color and supporting initiatives to educate and be educated on matters of racial justice for the Belen community at large.
Lord of all, we ask you to hear and answer our prayers. Give us eyes to see how the past has shaped the complex present and to perceive how we must create a new way forward with a new sense of community that embraces and celebrates the rich diversity of all, that helps us live out your call to reject the sin of racism, the stain of hate, and to seek a compassionate solidarity supported by your grace and your love. The Lord be with you. And may the blessing of Almighty God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our Lady of Belen, pray for us.